okay. Hold on. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that thing. Thank you. I do too. So good evening, everybody. My name is Jody Giannakopoulos. I'm an adult services associate at the Addison Public Library. So happy when I was researching and finding out about some uh, local chefs, I found Chef Gail Gand. Um, it was the season for farmer's market. And I, uh, and we actually discussed it together what we should do. It was great that we were on the same page about how to uh, best set up our evening. And so a two course farmer's market inspired meal is here and it is gonna be fantastic. I uh, hope you all got your recipes. If you've registered for this class or this Zoom, uh, you can look in your inbox and find a Word document with the recipes and a bio about Chef. Um, also, you can revisit this. We are streaming live to Facebook and YouTube. So uh, check it out again. If you need to go back, you certainly can. Um, very pleased to be here with everyone. Thank you for coming. And I am going to introduce Chef Gail Gann and she will tell you a little bit about herself and what we're gonna be doing. Thank you everyone for joining me in the kitchen tonight. I love that all you guys are in your kitchens too. This is meant to be a cooking along class. So if you're gonna be cooking along with me, make sure you've got your ingredients out. And I sent a, a equipment list, an equipment list for you. So if you could pull that stuff out too. Um, we are gonna be using the broiler later. I haven't preheated mine yet because um, I think we're gonna be using it towards the end of the hour. So if you want to wait to preheat your oven, that's perfectly fine. Um, I also talked about possibly using the grill, which I'm not going to tonight, just because then I have to disappear and go outside and leave you for two or three minutes while I'm turning things on the grill. So I'll be doing the option with the corn um, in a saute pan, but just know that you can make um, this corn relish by grilling your corn first, all right? And just to give you a little bit of background about me, I'm a Chicago chef and pastry chef. I had a fancy pants fine dining restaurant called True for 20 years um, downtown in Chicago. We had two Michelin stars at the end when we closed. And I had a show on the Food Network for 10 years called Sweet Dreams, which was the first ever all dessert, all pastry show that Food Network ever did. So I'm kind of the, like the godmother, not of soul, I wish I was, but I'm the godmother of pastry. And there's a whole generation of pastry chefs out there that are my fault because they watched me when they were little kids. Having said that, my show is back on Discovery Plus. They're running season five right now. Um, so if you want to catch Sweet Dreams, it's actually back on the air. Um, if you have Verizon, you can get Discovery Plus for free for a year, which is how I got it. Um, but you can catch that there. I also got a chance to work with Julia Child and her Baking with Julia book and television series on PBS. Um, so you can Google that and it's pretty hilarious. We shot that in like 1996. So I was kind of very blonde at the time and very quiet and that's uh, before I was media trained. And Julia is, you know, not six feet tall because she had a little scoliosis at the time, thank God. She was 84 when we filmed. So she was like 5'10 and I'm five feet. So it's a little bit of Mutt and Jeff show, but very darling. And um, She's very funny and I just feel really fortunate to have gotten a chance to work with her. I also have two James Beard Awards, one for Outstanding Pastry Chef and one for Best Service at my restaurant. I have a root beer company. So if you look in the area for Gail's root beer, that's, I'm Gail, that's me. I do a cinnamon, ginger, vanilla flavored root beer that's actually sold all over the country. I, what's considered a small batch artisan soda pop maker. I make 60,000 bottles a year, which I don't think it's fair, but they say that that small batch doesn't sound small to me, but I just wait for Coca-Cola to like buy me out so I can retire on the root beer. Um, I also have a virtual cooking school called Kitchen Sisters Cooking School. So if you want to do another class with me um, or my partner, Jess Dawson, who does kids classes on our cooking school, go to the website, kitchensisterscookingschool.com. I've got three classes coming up there. I've got a, a pie boot camp coming up, which is always a favorite, always sold out. Um, I'm doing an Italian dessert class and I've got a Latin dessert class coming up. I also teach at Aloha Farm in person, which is an organic historic farm in Lake Forest. And I have, a, I have two classes coming up there, one in September, I think on the 27th. And the class is, oh, it's potluck. 
um, portable dishes because we're, well, at the time we planned the class, we were just starting to be able to gather together again. And so I'm teaching you some things that you can like bring over to people's houses or drop off at people's houses. And in October, I'll be doing a harvest, fall harvest class, kind of as we harvest stuff from the garden. But what I wanted to do with you tonight is a farmer's market class. So we're gonna be using ingredients that you would typically find right now in season at the farmer's market. And we wanted to do something kind of light, kind of summery, um, healthy, a lot of texture, a lot of flavor and a lot of freshness. So what I came up for you guys to do with me is we're gonna make a caprese salad, which is sort of typically mozzarella cheese, tomatoes and basil, but we're gonna dress it up. We're gonna do um, a summer peach caprese salad. So we're gonna have some white peaches in there, which are in the store right now, um, whatever, heirloom tomatoes. You know, I'm at that point where it's like, I have to pick tomatoes every day in my garden or they're just gonna rot on the vine. So I've got, a, a variety of colors and tastes and thicknesses of skin that I'll use in that salad. Um, we're gonna be using some avocados, some cucumber, some basil, uh, a little bit of olive oil and balsamic vinegar. So that's a nice, fresh, simple, textural salad. Um, we'll do that last, the very end. But um, the main course I wanna do with you is a pounded salmon. It's called a salmon payard, which is salmon that we're gonna put between two pieces of plastic and pound it up thin. So it's gonna cook in like two, three minutes, super fast. And the nice thing about this dish, if you were to do it for a party, you can prep these pounded out pieces of salmon between plastic and just keep them in the fridge like that. And then at the last minute, you're kind of slapping it on the plate, peeling the plastic off and sticking it under your broiler for a very quick sear, like a very quick cook. Um, we're gonna make a relish to go on top of it and the relish really you know, is flexible. What we're gonna to use tonight is we're gonna use corn, we're gonna use um, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, some garlic, some lime juice, uh, some parsley. Let's see if there's any other ingredient in there, I'm forgetting. That's about it. So it's gonna be like a really fresh, not um, crunchy, cause we are gonna saute a lot of it, uh, but it'll, you know, it'll just be, kind of be like a garden in a relish that's gonna go on top of the salmon. So that's gonna be our meal tonight. Nice and light, nice and summery, not too filling. Um, does anyone have any questions before we get started or need help getting set up before we get started? Uh, just a quick, a quick note yeah. is, uh, you know, anything you wanna post in chat, um, I would be happy to field the question for you. If you have not received an email from me, uh, please would you privately message me and give me your email and I'll be sure and send that off right after class. Okay, don't be shy. You can also unmute. Hi, I was hoping I could just do a quick shout out. I'm Lisa. Uh, it's so nice to meet you. We emailed and I just wanted to say we're celebrating my mom's birthday, belated. <laughs> waiting for the cake. Oh my God, that's you. <laughs> that's yes. so, this is so <laughs> happy belated birthday. I think Thank I said to you email on the day. I <laughs> yeah. forgot to you that night. It was like last minute, but it was thank so you so much, much for joining us here. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Yes, yes. <laughs> really glad to meet you. I'm you know, so it's funny. All your sweet dreams of coming back. Yeah, you can you can watch it right after class if you want because we're streaming. <laughs> and I think there's about I think there's 36 episodes to choose from now. But please remember, those were shot 20 years ago, so 20 pounds ago. You know, <laughs> with hair with hair and makeup, you know, <laughs> budget for hair and makeup and wardrobe and all that. So be forgiving. Um, but it is fun to watch me, uh, you know, make eclairs in 22 minutes from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, I had so much fun and I've ever made them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, the first get started. Um, and thank you so much, Lisa. Um, I've got a cutting board here on my work surface and you can see it's kind of slippery, kind of slidey. And kind of dangerous. So what I like to do always first is take a wet paper towel, a damp paper towel, put it down on my work surface, and then put my cutting board on top of that. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. If you don't have a paper towel, you can use a tea towel. But look now how solid and you know still that is. It's not sliding around. So now my cutting board is not going to slip away from me. And I'm sure they make like rubber mats you can put under your cutting boards that are probably $23. So feel free to spend $23 or just use a damp paper towel, which is what my choice is. And then you can wipe it after, you know, wipe up afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my saute pan here. 
heat it up. Um, this is a nonstick saute pan. So if you've got one like that, great. If not, just a regular one's fine. And I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna saute this corn. Um, if for some reason my burner here doesn't get like hot enough to really get the color I want, I may switch it over to my Viking stove on the other side, but we'll see how much I can kind of get done right here in front of you. So um, I'm assuming you guys know how to shuck corn, but this is what corn looks like, you know, when it's got, got the peel still on it. And this is one that I shucked right before you got here. So if you were going to grill this to char it, you would just literally put this right on the grill. And as the kernels get, you know, some brown, some colors, some caramelization on them, you would just give it a turn on the grill. But instead, I'm going to cut these kernels off and I'm going to go ahead and saute them in the pan. Um, I'm going to cut them off. I know some people, maybe I should try this. They cut in a bowl so that everything like stays right in the bowl. Um, but I'm just going to go for it here and cut right down on my cutting board. So go ahead and use a sharp knife. I'm using a nice big one and just cut down on four or five sides of your cob of corn to remove the kernels. And this is that time of year to, you know, buy corn. It's cheap now. I think they're like four for a dollar in a lot of stores at this point. So just cut off all sides. So I've pretty much gotten all the kernels off. And let's go ahead and add that to the pan. Most of them are on my cutting board. A few hit the table. I'm gonna go ahead and add these to the olive oil. I don't hear a sizzle, so I'm kind of feeling like this isn't quite as hot as I would like it to be. Um, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna be moving it over to the stove. But, oh, I just heard a little sizzle though. Did you get, can you guys hear that? So go ahead and start cooking your corn. Get it off the table here. And while that's cooking, um, let's go ahead and prep the other vegetables. So we're gonna need some green bell pepper. I've got half of one here and then we're gonna use half a red bell pepper. So we're gonna chop those up. Um, just to show you how I would cut a pepper in half, um, obviously wash your peppers, but you want to make sure also that you take the label off. I know it sounds silly, but I have a friend who like always gets the stick, you know, or the bay leaf or the label. Um, so I'm conscious that for some people that they just seem to always get the, you know, the bone in the fish or whatever. So just check and make sure you've got your labels off and go ahead and cut that pepper in half. And what you've got inside is there's sort of a seed packet with the stem. Um, I've got a little container here that I'm just gonna put all my compost in because we do compost at my house. And what I do to get that seed packet out is just like make a peace sign and take those two fingers and just dig them in underneath the seed packet and then pull it towards you. And that'll take it right out. If there's any sort of white ribs inside, you can pull those off too. They don't hurt you or anything, but they don't really have any flavor. They're pretty like airy and fluffy. So I'm going to do the same thing with the green pepper. I'm just taking that peace sign fingers, go in there, pull up, and that core uh, seed packet and the stem will come right out. And again, I'm pulling off any ribs that are kind of light colored. And if you still see a few seeds in there, you can kind of like whack it on your hand and they'll come out. All right. So we've got our peppers seeded. Let me give my corn a little stir as we're getting the peppers ready. What we're looking for on the corn is a little bit of color. We want to get like, even if, if we could get some char on it, that would be really great. I don't know if we'll be able to do it on this burner. But. So let's go ahead and cut up our peppers. I'm going to cut these halves into strips and the strips are about a, like a half inch wide. I'd like to say a quarter inch, but I think I'd be lying. It's like, but you know, bigger than a quarter, but probably less than a half inch, but just strips. And then we're gonna cut those across the other direction to end up with some nice little, you know, chopped pieces of pepper. And what we wanna do is make everything sort of the same size. So you kind of wanna make the pieces of pepper the same size as the kernels of corn. So the relish is gonna be all these different colors, red, green, yellow, but the same size pieces. So that gives you sort of a goal of how big you want to cut your peppers. Okay. 
So I've got my red done. If you see any seeds in there, like there's, I've got one, two seeds that were hiding. Just go ahead and pull those out with your finger. Okay, go ahead and put the red pepper aside. Let's do the green pepper now. And I think I forgot to thank Addison Library for inviting me to come cook with you guys. So thank you so much for um, wanting to spend a little time with me. I appreciate that. I, uh, someday maybe I'll even get there in person. <laughs> Wow, definitely. What would that be like? Definitely <laughs> want you to come. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the goal eventually. Um, though, you know, this is a nice taste situation and I've got everything I need in my kitchen. The only thing is you can't smell how good it smells, but I'm hoping your kitchen smells good like mine. If you're working through the recipe with me. So this strip is a little wide, so I'm gonna cut that in half. Same thing on this one. I got a little big on me. All right, and you notice when I'm holding the green pepper, I'm kind of curling my fingers in. I don't want to give myself a manicure, so I'm not holding my fingers out flat. I'm kind of curling them while I hold the green pepper. All right, this there's a couple chunks that kind of got through too big, so I'm gonna cut those in half with another one. That looks good to me. All right, let's see. Let's give the corn a stir. And I'm just looking at my recipe to see if we season it or not. We don't at this point. We're gonna season uh, the whole um, relish at one time. But oh, I'm starting to get a little color up. So I don't know if you guys ever, did you, have you ever like done that in the pan where you kind of flip whatever's in there? Um, it's a chef thing. And I think the reason we do it is because we can't find a spoon sometimes. So we just like shake the pan and kind of pull it towards ourselves and flip the food over in the pan. If you want to learn how to do that and you're you know kind of timid to do it tonight with hot corn, the way we start is just put rice in a cold pan. Just pour some uncooked rice, you know, like without any water or anything, just dry rice in a saute pan and sit there and kind of shake it back and forth, shake it back and forth, and then suddenly like yank it towards yourself really fast and it'll flip. Um, so that'll be how, that's your homework. Let's practice flipping rice. Next time we can do the corn. All right, what else do we need? We need some garlic, right? Minced, we're gonna need one clove of garlic minced. So um, I just wanna show you this, and I know you guys probably know this, but you know this whole thing is called a bulb right? And then the one little chamber or piece that I'm pulling off of the bulb is the clove. And I know you guys know that, but I get like two emails a year from someone saying, oh, I made your pea hummus and I used two cloves of garlic and it was inedible. What did I do wrong? And I say, send me a picture of a clove of garlic. And they send me a picture of this, of a bulb. So I know there's a couple people out there that just are don't have the lingo quite down. So as a public service, every class I teach that I use garlic in, I make sure that that message gets through loud and clear. Um, you know, bulb, clove, right? Bulb, clove, okay, got it. So what I did was I just cut that little woody end off the garlic and now I'm gonna smash it with the side of my knife, the flat side of my knife, just place it on there and make a fist and just whack it. Feels really tough and good to do. And what you'll find is that it kind of squishes the garlic, but it splits the peel. The peel is dry and brittle, and you can usually kind of grab it by the tip and give it a quick shake, and the peel will come right off from the clove. So that's how I like to peel garlic. There's many ways to do it. Um, and you know, whatever you're comfortable with is great and fine. I, as a chef, find that that's like the fastest way for me. I need to show you my corn. I've got some nice browning going there. It's still kind of a light caramel color, but it definitely has some caramelization. You know, corn's got natural sugar in it. And what we're doing is we're caramelizing that sugar. And also corn has starch in it. And we're actually converting the starch to sugar by cooking it this way. All right, now with the garlic, we need to mince that up. So just, I'm kind of going to cut it. I'm like cutting it 
down like slits in it and then i'm going to cut across and then i'll chop it up a little bit more to get it as fine as possible okay great and just look and see uh, we're going to saute the peppers we're going to add the garlic and that's it okay good 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 easy so go ahead and mince that garlic as fine as you can so I think the corn is in good shape. Got some nice fun color on it. Nice, good flavor and caramelization. You know, if we did this on a grill, it would be like black and charred, which is fun too. Um, but I'm thinking this is cooked enough for our purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that corn right in a bowl and let it rest while we get the rest cooked, okay? So pan back on. And now we're gonna go ahead and cook the peppers. I'm gonna put a little more olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil that I use, um, you know, but I buy it by the big tin. So, um, and then I just put it in a squirt bottle like this, which makes it easier to use. So we're gonna saute the peppers, but not the garlic yet. The garlic's gonna go in at the end. Garlic has a lot of natural sugar in it and it burns really quickly. And it's funny, some of the early, like, if you read, Tomato sauce recipes, I don't know why, but they always have you like saute the garlic first and then the onions and then add everything else. And by the time you get the onions cooked, the garlic is burnt. And I, I don't love the flavor of burnt garlic. I don't know about you, but so I've actually reversed the process where the garlic's always going in at the end and it's given like 30 seconds to a minute in the pan at the very end. So you see my garlic's still there on my cutting board. Let's go ahead and saute the red and green peppers first. And I'm gonna season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. We'll season it again in the bowl, you know, once we taste it, but go ahead and give a little shake of salt, a little bit of ground pepper. And the pepper that I use, it's actually not just black peppercorns. I don't know if you've seen it in the stores lately, but I know Woodman's has it and Jewel has it. You can get a pepper mix and Mariano's too. So it's like white peppercorn, green peppercorn, black peppercorn. Sometimes there's even pink peppercorn in there. And I sometimes throw in a little juniper berry. So you get like different, different versions of pepper. Black pepper is, you know, pretty much the like uber, you know, that's sort of the main pepper that you want. But white pepper is really nice because it's actually just black pepper with the peel off. And the peel is where a lot of the heat is. So it's kind of nice to get rid of some of the heat and get more of the subtle kind of floral perfumey flavors that pepper does have, but we almost never know that because the heat overwhelms it. Um, so it's kind of like shushing the loudest person in the room so you can hear the quiet person. I have twins. <laughs> Guess how I know that. <laughs> Guess why I make that analogy that sometimes it's a shush the love so you can hear the quiet one. All right, so we're sauteing. <laughs> I'm hoping they're not listening right now. Um, so we're gonna saute those till they're you know a little bit more tender than they are right now, and then we'll add the garlic and cook it to the you know just 30 seconds and that's it. Um, then we're gonna combine everything together in the bowl with the corn and put some lime juice on there, some parsley and some cilantro. So let's go ahead and get the lime ready. I'm just gonna cut my lime in half and squeeze some juice from it into a measuring cup. I'm just using this because it's glass and you can see through it, but I'm gonna use one of these guys to juice my citrus. Um, when I first got this, I thought that you stuck the fruit in this way, because it was sort of the same shape. You know, it seemed like that's how it would be done, but apparently it's not sort of, it's counterintuitive. You've got holes in the bottom there and that's where the juice is gonna come out. So you actually wanna put it cut face down and then this is like turning it inside out. So it took me a few times to know that. I'm gonna go ahead and just squeeze this into this measuring cup. We're looking for two teaspoons of lime juice. So I think I'm gonna need both halves. And you know, if you end up with a little extra, there's your cocktail start for tonight, you know, if you're doing any cocktails with dinner or before dinner. Lime juice is always a great way to start. 
All right, so that should be enough. I do have another lemon here if it's not quite enough. All right, my peppers are looking pretty like, you know, juicy and a little limp. They don't look raw or, you know, too crisp. So I think we're there. I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic now. And, you know, when you're using garlic, the wild card there is the cloves are different sizes. You know, there's big cloves, there's small ones. And what I usually say is if your name ends in a vowel, go for the larger clove. And if it ends in a consonant, go for the smaller clove. It just seems to be that ethnic um, groups whose names end in vowels like things a little more flavorful and more spicy. All right, so I added the garlic. I just turned my burner off right now. We'll just give it a little time in there to kind of sweeten up, take the heat off it. You know how raw garlic can be kind of hot? So we're getting rid of that, um, I don't mean temperature hot, but like kind of taste, you know, they taste hot. So we've got this corn. Let's go ahead and add the peppers and the garlic to the corn. Beautiful. You can actually put this back here because we're done with it. And let's pull this burner off. We're done. I'm going to put it somewhere safer. There we go. I have a question, Chef. All right. Yeah. Uh, what kind of pan do you use? So those pans um, that I, what I just used now, it's called Eurocast. And it's a nonstick pan. And it's one of those ones where like it's in the metal. It's not just a coating on top. Um, the nice thing about Eurocast is, and I've got them in all different sizes, um, the handles come off. So if for some reason you were like sauteing, you know, a filet in here and then you want to stick it in the oven, which chefs do a lot, you just unscrew it and the handle just slips right off. There we go. So, you know, it's kind of nice if you're a person that likes to saute and then go into the oven. That's great. Um, like I was making Dutch babies, you know, I was making, mm -hmm. you know, the apple pancakes yep. and so you can take the handle off and throw it in the oven oh cool so cool, I cool. like them um, they make all different sizes they're great great um i did i did work do work for them i worked their booth at like houseware show one year but they gave me a set of it and i just can't stop using them especially for fried eggs you know one of the things that i do is i have backyard chickens that i got during covid and for you know for, for something to do like what do i do um but so I make a lot of fried eggs and these pans are great. It's, you know, one of those, they just slip right out. All right, so let's get this relish finished up. I'm just gonna combine the corn, the peppers and the garlic. And then let's add the um, lime juice to try to cool it off a little bit. So we want two teaspoons of lime juice. I don't know if I have two from that. One. Oh yeah, I do. Two. This is kind of a small lime. So two teaspoons of lime juice. Just try to cool it off a little bit as I stir this. And then let's go ahead and add parsley and cilantro. So we're gonna chop up, let's see, we want about a teaspoon of chopped parsley, a teaspoon of chopped um, cilantro. So I've got some parsley from my garden here. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the season, but I'm starting to sort of, you know, get things before they go to seed. So I've got some parsley here. I'm just pulling the leaves off the stems. Though the stems have the same great flavor, so really you could include the stems in your chop. Um, I think it's the chef in me that, you know, when I had true, people were paying big money for dinner, so you don't want to give them stems, right? <laughs> And let's get some cilantro. I've got some in the fridge here. And with parsley, if you are buying it, usually, you know, it comes in like a, uh, like a bunch and just like cilantro. Cilantro, I never really like wash from the store because it just seems so delicate. It usually comes kind of damp. Um, so I might give it like a quick shake. 
but I find if I like wet that whole thing, it's just gonna fall apart by the next day. With parsley though, it's the complete opposite. So if you buy a bunch of parsley, I usually take it and dip it in a bowl of cold water and take it out and you'll see like sort of sand and grit in the bowl. And then I give it a shake to, you know, get the water, like the excess water off, I just do that. And then stick it in a Ziploc bag and close it. Now don't push all the air out. You actually are creating sort of like a little greenhouse for the parsley. Now it doesn't work with cilantro. Cilantro is too delicate, but parsley will last like almost a month that way. So I know some people, you know, they um, treat it like it's a flower, you know, they put it in like a cup of water or they'll wrap it in damp paper towels or something. I just never find that that lasts very long. But if I just dip the whole thing in water, get the dirt off, shake it off, stick it in a Ziploc bag, leaving whatever excess water is on there, it lasts for weeks and weeks and weeks. All right, I'm just cutting off a little bit of cilantro, kind of the same amount as parsley that I had. And let's go ahead and chop that. So I cut off kind of the tops of the cilantro, um, but their stems are pretty tender too. And right now, I hope if you're chopping cilantro, you're getting that great smell. I just love it. Now, there are some people who hate cilantro and it tastes like soap. I know that um, if you're one of those people, maybe skip the cilantro in this recipe. But for me, it's sort of a quintessential like summer flavor that goes so well with, um, yeah, these are sort of Mexican inspired ingredients a little bit, peppers, corn. So just go ahead and chop, chop, chop. And then we'll add that. I'm gonna give this one more stir. I'm just trying to cool it off a little bit before I go ahead and add the parsley and cilantro so it doesn't go too black on me. And then we'll give it a taste and we'll see what it needs. You might need some more pepper, salt, lime, you know, feel free to kind of season it up the way you like it, but you're looking for just like a really fresh, um, like summer in a bowl, okay? That's what you're making there. And when you add that parsley and cilantro, the color, it's really nice. All right, let's just give a quick taste. Mm. Oh, it's fun. Sorry. The corn's kind of sweet, but you get the acid and sharpness from the lime. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. I think that's all it needs really, okay? All right, put that aside for now. And let's start working on our salmon. I'm going to put the cilantro back in the fridge. Anybody have any questions about the relish? So we're going to use it sort of room temperature, but certainly you could, um, you could, you know, chill it. We don't have a lot of, you know, there's some olive oil on there, but like say we had sauteed in butter, if you chilled it, that butter, you know, is going to get hard at, when it's chilled, olive oil doesn't. Um, but you could serve a cold as well if you wanted. Okay. Any questions before we move on to, to the salmon? Well, I had a question. Um, what kind of salt, I know you mentioned the pepper, but what kind of salt are you a fan of? I actually use kosher salt. Not because I keep kosher. <laughs> I am Jewish, but I don't keep kosher. But um, I, I like, chefs usually like kosher oh. salt because it's these big crystals. So they're really easy to see. They're easy to like feather, like they don't, you know, kind of stick in one place. They you can see like when I, you know, sprinkle them on my board, they spread out really evenly, really easily. So chefs just love kosher salt. And it's sort of like poor man's sea salt, if you will. It's, you know, got a, a flaky crystal consistency versus table salt that has iodine in it is more like a that's more like a like a diamond shape or a stop sign whereas um kosher salt is kind of like mica it's like flaky so we like using that and it's kind of crunchy when you hit it when you bite into it well so as a, my mom pointed out apparently you put it in the recipe kosher salt and i just missed it <laughs> oh oh I, write that? I think it's in one part but not the other <laughs> on the same it says kosher so she oh, was yeah, like, look, I in the salmon it says it, but not in the actual relish. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, any kind of salt will work, but. 
So I've got a, a piece of salmon here. This is more than a pound. I think I told you guys to get a pound for um, two servings. And usually that would be like a pound with the skin. So we're gonna be cutting the skin off, which you know brings it down to about 12 ounces. And then, um, but feel free to you know make a smaller portion, a larger portion, whatever you want. But let's go ahead and open up the salmon I've right got here. And I'm actually just gonna make one because my daughter is having Chipotle. So I'm just cooking for my husband right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just pound one out. But you guys, if you want to pound two or three, um, you know, however many you want to cook for tonight, that's fine. Um, I'm going to cut the salmon on this board, and then later I'll flip my board over because I've still got some veg work to do for the caprese salad. Um, I just want to teach you like that trick. You can use both sides of your board. Now my salmon, my piece of salmon here, you see it has skin on it, so I'm going to want to take that skin off. I'm going to actually cut a hunk from this. So I'm going to, I was going to get three out of this, out of this one pound to be honest. So I'm just going to cut like one piece off for now. I'm cutting through the skin, put this aside, I'll put that back in the fridge. And then I'm going to take the skin off of that piece. So what you can do is you put your piece of fish skin side down and kind of put your hand really flat on top of it and then just start to bring your knife right at the edge of the skin, like just above where the skin is. And then just sort of start pulling the fish back a little as your knife stays nice and low to your cutting board. I'm almost kind of pushing the knife down onto the cutting board to keep it just above the skin so I don't lose any you know usable meat but I still get that skin off and of course you can have your fishmonger take the skin off for you you don't have to do it yourself but there I've got the piece of skin and you know that came was right here and I kind of cut it off and there we go so we've got a nice hunk of salmon here and now we're going to put it between two pieces of plastic wrap um, let me just wash my hands real quick. I'm still gonna be touching salmon, but I just wanna get the initial stuff off while I get my plastic ready. So I've got um, I have a big roll of plastic wrap. So let's get a piece out. So it has to be big enough. Um, I've got mine, it's about 20 inches of plastic wrap. Um, so it's big enough that you can put the salmon on it and then fold it over. So you'll have plastic under the salmon and over the salmon, okay? So here's my piece of salmon, putting it on there. And then I'm gonna fold the plastic over it. All right, so it's kind of sandwiched between the two pieces of plastic, but in the center, got it? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pound this to make it thinner. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my cutting board just because I've got a wooden table here, so it works well to pound on. Now for pounding, you can either use um, like a meat mallet if you've got one, you know, it looks like a hammer. And on one side, it's got a textured surface with the spikes, don't use that side. But on the other side, it's a flat surface that just, you know, applies pressure and pounds things out. Um, another version, this is an Italian one that you can use that you pound things out with and it's just got a handle and a really heavy round piece of metal. So you can use that um, or you can just use a rolling pin if you don't have a, you know, one of these mallets. Um, I'm gonna try a little of each just to see like which one I like better. So I'm gonna start with the regular meat mallet. And I've got it skin side down, right? And I'm just sort of pounding it. We're gonna pound it pretty thin, like almost a quarter inch at the end. So this is gonna really spread out a lot. And then we're gonna be placing it on the plate, pulling the plastic off and broiling it really fast. 
Well, since I said broiling it, let's go ahead and get our broiler ready. So let's start preheating our oven um, on broil. And I've got my rack in my oven pretty high. It's on the second to highest um, rung there. So it's pretty close. It's going to be really close to the heating element. So I'm heating my broiler up now. Okay. So that's pretty controllable. I like this one, but let's use this one for a little bit and just see. But this gives like a broader, um, you know, spread, shall we say. But that's nice too. And then let's try a little rolling pin, see how that goes. And, you know, rolling pins, like this is a pretty thin rolling pin. It's really a pin and it's tapered. This is my great grandmother's rolling pin that she brought over from Budapest when she came over on the boat. She brought her three kids. She brought all the money she had, which was $8 and four cents. And she brought this rolling pin. So no one should be surprised that I'm a pastry chef, right? Because of all her belongings, this is what she grabbed and brought with her on the, you know, seven day journey in steerage with her kids and a rye bread. I think she grabbed a rye bread as well, but. So this is her rolling pin that I like to use. I like using it not only because it's kind of delicate and easy to control, but it makes me feel like I've got generations in the kitchen watching over me. It's not as lonely in the kitchen if you use a piece of equipment that's a family heirloom. Because, you know, it went from my great grandma to my grandma, to my mom, to me, and my kids make pies of the two. So it's, it's a multi-generational rolling pin. I used to travel with it always. I remember when I got my top 10 best new chef award from Julia Child at the Aspen Food and Wine Classic, I brought this rolling pin. I think I had to do like a pie workshop or something or demo. So I brought my great grandma's rolling pin because I was so nervous, you know, to cook on stage with Julia Child. And I thought I need some moral support. Who can I bring with me? I know I'll bring my great grandma, <laughs> which means I'll bring the rolling pin. So I brought it with and um, when I was later in my career, when I was um, flying through, I think it was San Francisco airport, the TSA guy recognized me. He's like, oh my God, you're that pastry girl. You're that, you know, I watch you all the time. You're that, that, you know, girl that makes all those cakes and I love your show. And then he sees my rolling pin in my carry on and says, you're going to have to check this. And I'm like, why? You know what I do. And what I he goes, this could be considered a weapon. And I said, you know, I, I've never considered making it a weapon till now because I want to hit you. <laughs> like, I'm so mad. I'm like, they took my great grandma's innocent rolling pin and turned it into a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> it was kind of a sad day for me. So I can't travel with it anymore unless I check my luggage. And a lot of times I'm like too cheap to check. Um, so I have to leave it home. Right, I just want to show you my salmon. So I've got this piece, oh, it's sliding out, sorry. It's like sliding out because it's slippery. But I've got this piece between the plastic wrap, right? And if you were doing a dinner party, you could just like leave it like that and at the last minute, put it on the plate. Um, but let's go ahead, mine's sliding around. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get, oh, there's a piece of, uh, try to get it on the plate. So you want to take the plastic off the skin side or what was the skin side and slap it onto the plate and then pull the plastic off. So you've got this really beautiful thin piece of salmon and I'm going to throw this little patch on there that slipped out um, Gail, on the plate. Can I, is it, it looks from here carpaccio thin, right? or maybe a little thicker? Uh, it's, not, it's not as thin as carpaccio. It's a little thicker than carpaccio. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but it's, you know, it's not a quarter, it's probably thinner than a quarter inch. Perfect. And that's gonna allow it to cook pretty rapidly. So um, we're not gonna cook it quite yet. Um, I still wanna get some caprese going. So let's go ahead and just put this in the fridge for you know five minutes while we're working on the caprese. And then we'll get our salmon finished. But that's the prep for it. We're just gonna brush it with a little bit of olive oil right before it goes into the oven and season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. 
All right, so I've got my salmon side of my board. I'm putting my damp paper towel back down and I'm gonna put my board salmon side down, all right? So let's go ahead and start prepping the caprese stuff. Um, we're gonna need a white peach and hopefully you've got one that's ripe. Again, take that sticker off. Um, I've got some avocados. I don't, you know, with avocados, you just like never know. So I have three. We'll cut them open. We'll see, see what we find inside there. Okay. Um, we've got a bunch of tomatoes here. So these are tomatoes from my garden. Some have kind of variegated um, peel. Here's one that they're actually, it's called a black tomato. So it's just the top is black, but um, it's almost like purple black color. So I wanted to use a couple different types of tomatoes that have different textures, different colors. This is just a Roma tomato, but they're really sweet because they're just from my garden. And then I've got this yellow one that that would be fun. Um, this is just a red, and I don't know the name. I have like 15 different varieties and I don't know what they're all called at all. But um, I'm just gonna pick out these four for now. And then I've got some mozzarella, some fresh mozzarella. So not the domestic kind, but the, you know, really white sort of fresh stuff. Got some basil leaves here, um, some olive oil, some balsamic, and then just salt and pepper. So let's go ahead, get yourself some kind of bowl to make this in. So this is gonna be like a big chunky salad um, that we're gonna put together. Try not to block your view too much. I'll put the bowl off to the side. So let's go ahead and cube up that white peach. Um, I'm gonna get a new knife because my knife is salmon-y. So here's a new one. I'll throw this one in the sink. And I'm even gonna wash my hands because I might have like some you know, oil on my hands from salmon. Because mine tried to swim away from me when it slipped out of the plastic. So we're gonna cut these into pretty big chunks, but think about each one like, a size that you could put in your mouth. You don't want someone to have to like cut this salad with a knife. Um, so when I'm cutting peaches up, what I do is I cut around, there's sort of like a seam on peaches and nectarines. Um, so I'm cutting along that seam and then I unscrew, it'll come off and if it's a freestone, here it comes, unscrew um, the pit from the rest of the peach. And then to do the, to get the pit out of the side where it remained, I just cut a seam down so that now you've got two quarters and just kind of peel them back. I'm gonna actually cut it away from this piece because it's a little soft and ripe, which is gonna give good flavor, but I don't wanna you know, mush it. All right, so go ahead and cut your white peach into chunks. I'm sort of doing like, wedges and then I'm going to cut those wedges up. So I'm cutting across them to end up with a piece about that big. So. And go ahead and put that in your bowl. I love white nectarines and white peaches. They're just, it's a really special flavor. That's, I mean, I love peaches as well. And I, you know, make peach jam and peach pies every year. But I find that white peaches just kind of have a perfuminess that regular peaches don't. And so I kind of love utilizing that. The end of my peach was a little soft. So I'm just gonna put that in the compost. All right, then the next thing we need is some tomatoes. We're just gonna use like one whole tomato, but if you're using a couple different kinds, you might be using, you know, two small ones or five small ones or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the purple one. It has a split in it. So I'm just cutting around the split. Um, it's not like juicing out of the split, but it's just not the prettiest. So maybe I'll eat that as my snack. Um, so you want to try to cut these in chunks that are about the same size as what the um, white peach was cut into. And if you find your knife is not sharp enough, go ahead, get your sharpening steel out. Where is mine? And just give it a quick you know, run over your sharpening steel. 
Um, if you're good at it, make sure someone's watching you because you look super cool. You look really tough. Stuff in your knife. So let's see if that's a little better. Yes, much better. All right, so here's one tomato. So let's get some of this yellow tomato in there. I think that's gonna look nice. I might only use half of that though, because I do wanna get that variegated one in there too. And I'm just gonna cut a V out of the, at the top there to get that stem piece off. And this is a bigger tomato, so I'm just gonna slice it down and then across. Again, we're trying to create chunks that are sort of the same size. And now we've got some great color going. That's when I get happy. We've got the white peach is kind of this, you know, fleshy pale pink. I've got the purpley black tomato, the yellow. And now let's do some of this variegated one. So it's kind of striped yellow and red. And then I've got one little plum tomato. It's got a bad spot on one side. So I thought, let's get it into this salad before things get worse. So I'm just gonna use the, so the side of it that's okay. So I've got a bad spot. I'll cut that off. You can give that half the tomato to the chickens. They love them. And go ahead and use the good side, the good half. But this is aroma, like a little aroma tomato. All right, there we go. And that can be chicken food too. Um, now we're gonna need just like a quarter of a cucumber. I actually sometimes like to buy these pickling cucumbers slightly. They've been in the stores. Um, and I don't know why I like them. I think they're they're like crunchier, crisper than some of the other varieties of cucumbers. So I like, and I guess because they're smaller, they like I tend to buy a big cucumber, we'll eat, you know, a third of it and then the rest goes bad. So I kind of like that these are smaller. So let's go ahead and cut this into chunks. I'm cutting it into like half inch slices, so pretty big slices. And then whenever you're cutting stuff, find the flat side and turn it on the flat side so it doesn't rock around, so it's a little safer. And I'm just gonna cut that into quarters. So we've got you know chunks about the same size as the tomatoes. This is gonna mostly add some great crunchy texture. So I used about half of that seven inch um, little, tin, little cucumber. All right, let's check the avocados and see if they're worth even thinking about. I'm looking for the mozzarella. Did I, oh, there it is, half of okay. So same thing as we did with the, the nectarine or peach. I'm gonna cut this kind of from the top to the tip and back around and, and unscrew it and see what we've got. And actually, we got lucky. We did good. Um, I think we're just, we're using half. We're only gonna use half, but I do wanna show you how to get that pit out, what you wanna do, and it's kind of scary, but you'll be okay. Hold it in your palm and just take your big knife and like cut it right into the pit and then give a little twist and it'll come right out, okay? And this is a pretty small pit, so usually they're a lot bigger, so not as, you know, you don't have to be as precise. Um, so with the, with the um, avocado, we can either cut cubes right in the peel. That's one way to do it. Or we can cut this half in, in half again. So we've got a quarter and then take the peel back. Just like grab it with your thumb and peel it. Just pull it back to get that peel off. Comes off pretty easy. Let's do the other side. Take the tip of the peel and peel it back. Mine broke into two pieces, that's okay. So now I'm gonna approach it from the other end, grab that tip. It's kind of busting up, but you can you know, get it off pretty whole, these big pieces of skin. So that's how I peel a cucumber, I mean an avocado, sorry. I'm gonna cut them in half again. We'll add them last, because they're pretty soft. And then we're gonna cut up some mozzarella. So I've got half a ball of fresh mozzarella here. 
Let's cut that into cubes. And at the end, we're gonna give everything a toss and then we'll add the avo like last, last after we do our first toss, okay? So kind of same thing. I'm just cutting this like a half an inch thick and then I'm gonna cut across. I'm cutting across three times and then I'll turn it and cut across three times the other way. Maybe four times the other way. Mine's like overly. And that'll give us a nice, you know, cube. Sprinkle that in there. All right, let's go ahead and tear in some basil. So I've got, it says two basil leaves. This is the top of my basil plant. So the leaves are pretty tiny. So I'm going to actually add like five. Because they're, you know, they're like the size of a walnut and usually basil leaves are much bigger. So you can either tear it or just give a quick chop across. I'm gonna go across in two directions, sprinkle that in. Let's do some grinds of pepper. I'm gonna do a drizzle of that extra virgin olive oil and some balsamic. So do I wanna add the balsamic once we get it on the plate? I do, so I'm gonna wait on the balsamic. We're gonna do that once we get it on the plate, okay? But let's go ahead and toss this to kind of get it, you know, flavors starting to blend and juices starting to come out. Um, did I do salt on it or no? You remember? I'm gonna. No, just pepper. Yeah, I don't think I did any salt. So let's just throw a little salt on and then gently with a, see I'm using like a rubber spatula, go ahead and start folding, like put that spatula under the salad, lift up and fold it over. It's beautiful. Right? I was going to say, I think there's like a theme here where, you know, we've got a lot of color and I mean, it's mostly vegetables, but then you're going to get that splash of white peach, that sort of jammy white peach flavor. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and just put the avocado on top, but I'm not folding it in yet. We'll do that at the very end. And I think it's time now to broil our salmon. So go ahead and get your salmon out of the fridge. And I'm gonna just brush the top with a little bit of olive oil and then season it with salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna give it a quick squirt, like a little drizzle. And then I've got a pastry brush that I'm just gonna brush it out with. There's a lot of natural oils in salmon, you know, omega-3 fatty acids um, that are really healthy, good fat for you. And I don't know if you've ever um, seen Eglin's Best Eggs. I don't buy them anymore because I have my own chickens, but. Eglin's best eggs claim to have lower cholesterol and higher omega-3 fatty acids. And I was like, how do they do that? So I went to their booth at one of the food shows and asked, and they feed their chicken salmon meal. So that's how they get omega-3 fatty acids into their system and it goes into the eggs and it lowers the cholesterol. So it's a real thing. It's not just like a you know sales pitch. All right, let's do a little bit of pepper over it. But remember, we are going to top it with the relish, you know, some flavor coming from that, but then a little sprinkle of salt. And let's go ahead and get that in the oven. We're going to broil this for, my hope is like, what do I say, like two minutes? Yeah, about two minutes. We don't have to flip it or anything. Now, I should have said earlier, like, make sure you use a plate that can go in the oven. It's going to get hot. If you're more comfortable putting that plate on something, like on a sheet pan, so that it's easier to get in and out. Um, go ahead and you can place it on something. But let's go ahead and get it under the broiler and just like two minutes. So I'm gonna set a timer for two minutes. I might even check it after one just to make sure it's not like running away from us. Um, the other thing I'm gonna add to my relish, just cause I have it, is I've got some tarragon growing in my garden. So I picked it um, before class and I just love the flavor of tarragon. It's sort of an anise flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull off some of the leaves of that. So feel free to use whatever herbs you've got growing or you could find, you know, if fresh dill is going on like crazy in your garden, grab that, um, you know, whatever you, whatever herb you like. This is unlike, not like pastry. Pastry, like I don't let you bury things that much, but with savory cooking, we really can kind of like, you know, express ourselves and, and do what we're curious 
and you know you want to know like how would it taste if I added some tarragon? I'm going to chop the tarragon just to make sure it disperses a little better. Chef, I have a question right. about if you were going to do this on the grill. The salmon. The salmon. The corn? Um, I don't think you can do it on the grill. Okay. So you need the meat from above. Gotcha. Though maybe someone's like a grill meister out there and would know yeah, right? a way to pull that off. Because I know there's all these like new things where people, you know, reflect, deflect heat and stuff like that. But oh boy, I don't. But the term pie yard, does that refer to the pounding? That's the pounded thin. Yeah, that's, that's okay. you know, it being thin and pounded out. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just plate up the caprese salad. So we put the avo in there, right? And I haven't really stirred it with that in yet. But um, I think it's time to introduce the avocado to everyone else but just gently, okay, really carefully. And that's my two minutes. Let me go check how my salmon is. I'm gonna give it like one more minute, okay? It looks opaque on the surface, but I can kind of see underneath, it still looks like a little deeper orange color. So I'm gonna give it one more minute while I get this salad on the plate. I'm just gonna go ahead and plate up the whole, the whole thing and then let's give it a drizzle. I've got some really nice balsamic vinegar here that's from Modena, which is the area in Italy where if you're making balsamic vinegar, it has to be made there. Balsamic vinegar, the interesting thing, it's usually vinegar is made from wine. So that's why it's, it's all its sugars have been turned to, to alcohol and acid. But balsamic is different. They actually started from grape juice, not grape wine that's been fermented. So it retains all its sugar, its natural sweetness because it isn't converting it to alcohol. Um, so that's why balsamic vinegar is so sweet. And what they do is they age it for years. They like put it in a big barrel and let it sort of evaporate and age for a year. And then they move it to a smaller barrel and a smaller barrel and a smaller barrel. And it kind of intensifies the flavor and concentrates it. All right, I think we're there. Yeah. So go ahead and take your salmon out. Show you what mine looks like. So it, you know, it has that sort of opaque, lighter color um, than it would normally have, or that it did before we put it in there. And let's go ahead and put some of that relish on top. So I'm going to kind of strew it across. I'm going to do kind of a line across it. Oh, nice. And then I think, I think I'm going to garnish with a little bit of this tarragon since we put that in the, you know, in the, relish at the last minute. So we've got a little piece there. So there's the salmon with the corn relish. You see the little sprig of tarragon. Um, I would present this probably um, what I call, I would have that line of relish. We call it 10 o'clock to four o'clock. So pretend this is a clock face and the top of the relish is at 10 o'clock and the bottom's at four o'clock. So it's kind of at an angle to you when you're serving it, okay? And then with the uh, caprese salad, got a little drip here I'm gonna just take care of. And let's throw a little sprig of basil just right in the middle, just to kind of give a focal point. And there's your summer white peach caprese salad. So we just made dinner in less than an hour because I talked most of the time. And you, I'm hoping you guys made dinner. Did, did everybody get to the finish line with me? Are we able to, if I had a rosé open, we'd toast with it right now. But I, I drank two bottles last night with a friend. So I'm not drinking tonight. <laughs> um, but I hope everybody got their, got their salmon out of the oven in time, got their relish across it. And what a nice summer meal, right? Like throw a loaf, you know, a baguette with this or, you know, a loaf of great sourdough and chilled rosé, I would be very happy. I hope you are too. <laughs>
<laughs> Any questions about what we did? I think uh, that was just so well done, Chef. I mean, yeah. really, so well done. You know, the, it, um, I mean, it, it looks complicated kind of, but, you know, it was easy for us, right? I mean, that yes. wasn't very hard. And to eat it oh. outside. Yes, I'm going to go on this porch there. My husband's like hovering off camera with a fork waiting for me <laughs> to give him the high sign that it's okay to eat it. But yeah, you know, even if you've got like a screen porch like I do, eat outside with the, you know, the summer night sounds going on. Perfect. Perfect. Ladies, can you show us your, your creation? Oh yeah. Can you guys like put your video on and show us what you made? I can hear it. You we haven't played it yet because yours is so pretty and you were going to <laughs> okay, you know what? Maybe can you send a picture? I mean, take a picture when you finally do it, get it finished, okay. and just send it um, to the library. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Ooh, perfect. Mine. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see how you guys came out. Really would love that. Um, thanks for joining me again in my kitchen at home, my home kitchen. Um, next time, maybe we'll be in person, but I would love to see you at one of my kitchen sisters cooking school classes or at Eloa Farm. If you um, can get up there, it's probably pretty far distance for you guys, but it's a beautiful place. Uh, they have five acres um, that they grow organic produce on. They have a market every weekend with stuff that's grown and made with stuff that's grown. Oh, look, I see your salad. That looks great. Salad. Fantastic. I'm yeah. so happy. But I want to do pretty plating. Yeah, we well, have not actually <laughs> played it yet, but yours is beautiful. We're oh. still that fast. <laughs> Don't worry. No, it's still going to taste great. That's the thing to remember. You know, it's pretty, but it tastes good either way. So don't worry about it. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chef Gail. Thank you so much. I cannot sure. wait. My stomach was grumbling when I was watching. I'm like, oh. I thought God. I heard something. I yeah. Thought I heard something. <laughs> No, well, we, we look right, forward I'll to hosting you, you again. Time. Thank you. Yeah, I'll yes. see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Happy birthday again. Thank you. Take care.